it became a legal struggle. So we fired our project management team and it wiped out all of this, just made a mess of it. <laughs> this is Teddy. How are you, Teddy? Good. Good morning. Um, Roan here from Inertion. I just wanted to do a quick video. I usually catch public transport to work and it usually takes about 45 minutes. And I'm gonna ride the Raptor 2 today to work and see if I can beat that time. <laughs> it just started raining. I'm just gonna wait at this bus stop for a minute, but I'm probably gonna have to put the camera away. It's not waterproof. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know if I make it there. Hey guys, so I made it through the rain and it ended up taking 29 minutes to get to work. So I think that's about a 15 minute improvement on public transport. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. Hey Ryan, come over here for a minute. I just wanna say something too. Anyone who watches this, who wants to design their own products or make their own company where you're manufacturing stuff, one of the most critical things you gotta do is learn how to design in 3D, right? So I use SolidWorks. This is just a, a truck that I'm designing for no particular reason. So designing in 3D is important. You gotta learn how to do that, but you also need to um, learn how to do some 2D drawings as well. Most, um, Factories don't really want 3D drawings, they want a 2D drawing with all the dimensions um, and everything like that. So you really, you do need to learn how to do basic 2D drawings as well, dimension all the critical parts. And by, by no means am I an expert in the field of this, but all of the parts that are on our products, I design them. I do all the drawings, I'm not a trained engineer or anything, I've just taught myself um, and it's so important to have that skill so just thought I'd give you guys at home a little bit of insight into what it takes to start up your own business designing products. So get practicing in SolidWorks and learn how to do really nice 2D drawings. Have you been here the whole time? <laughs> I was mowing. Getting a bit. Okay, so someone on YouTube asked a question the other day about supply chain and asked if I could explain it a little bit more. I forget who it was, but we'll put it here when we find it. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good thing for us to talk about because it's really been our biggest struggle getting this product. I mean, designing the parts is one thing, but getting them made and getting them made correctly and on time and delivered to the right place so you can just put it all together is a real nightmare. So I thought I'd try to illustrate it so you can better understand why it's so difficult and why we've been struggling so much. So the thing is with supply chain or any project management, you have a date that you want something to be done by. And then depending how many parts you have, you've got um, all these different suppliers. So in the Raptor 2's case, we have about 60 custom made parts. I'm not gonna draw that, but let's just assume some have really long lead time. So let's down this, that's time, okay? Time progresses, it's a constant. Um, call it weeks, call it hours, 
call it whatever you want. And each different part has a different lead time. So some have long lead times and that's generally more complicated parts or parts that have complicated manufacturing processes. If you're molding parts in plastic or um, need to just make any mold making is generally really slow. So they're long lead time items and we definitely had a few of them. And then you'll have things that are sort of mid, mid lead, uh, lead time. So got a few there. And then you might have quite a bunch of things that are pretty quick to get. So maybe screws or bearings or bushings, actually bushings, we custom made them as well. So that's probably more like a midterm one. But let's say there's a few items that are sort of a bit quicker to get. Now, obviously when you start out, you're up here and you're ordering all these parts with enough time so that they're ready by this period here, by the, the date that you want everything to, be get, to, to come together to assemble it. So pretty much as time goes on, you get to a point, hopefully before you're ready to assemble it, where you've got all these parts all lined up all your ducks lined up is what they say sometimes. Now, we had a project management team in place to manage the supply chain, manage the lead times, and make sure all of these individual suppliers made stuff on time and basically to our specification. The problem is, it doesn't always happen that way. So, say if you've got a few items that never actually make it here or they get here and they're wrong. Unfortunately, what happens is you bounce back up into this timeline again and start the ball rolling again and that means you've got all these parts sitting around and you can't do your assembly. So the good news for inertia, actually last year was we actually got most of this sorted out. We had all our parts and we were pretty happy with that. We started building. The problem was that we realized some of these parts slipped through our acceptance criteria or the quality assurance process or the it's, it's incoming quality check is the official terminology. That's when you get these goods and before you do anything with them, you check for quality. Unfortunately, in our case, lots of things didn't make the cut. So lots of things had to bounce back. Okay, so huge delays. Now, after a while of this, you start asking yourself the question, is it because the design of the part wasn't good or was it because the acceptance criteria that we set wasn't explained clearly to the supplier or perhaps the supplier wasn't managed that well and after many months of heartache and pain i made a huge decision to wipe out our project management team and that started a domino effect basically what happened is that wiped out the supply chain because many of these suppliers were not dealing directly with inertia for some of these things. They had built relationships with our project management team and there were some legal issues or ownership things like when you make a mold, for instance, the person who gave the drawings to the tool making factory and paid the deposit you would assume they are the owner of the mold. Um, but in this case, sometimes our name wasn't on the purchase order. Another name was on the purchase order. So getting ownership of our molds to create things like wheels that we designed months and months ago. Good news, actually, the wheels are ready. Um, I'll show you pictures in a minute. Um, actually, I'll load the pictures onto the forum. Um, but yeah, it became a legal struggle. So we fired our project management team and it wiped out 
all of this just made a mess of it. So the last, let's say since December, we've been trying to piece it all back together. Contacting our suppliers, establishing relationships. Some of them had to be replaced with a new supplier to make a part like our deck factory. And it's been a complete mess guys. Um, so we're at the point where all these little pieces are about to be lined up again. The supply chain essentially rebuilt and we've just got to join this little gap. We've just got to get to this point where all the assembly of that stuff happens and the good news is a lot of the problems which caused delays were solved. So we're pretty confident that we've got all of our ducks lined up and it's just a matter of hit and go in our production facility, our new production facility. They've already proven that they can output a greater number than our previous team. Um, before Chinese New Year, they pumped out quite a number in a very short period of time. So we just had to wait for some more parts to come in and that's where we're at guys. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of the complexity and why the last few months have just been stagnation, not much happening. It's all about to happen guys. Thanks for watching. Hope it makes sense.